Good, oh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Storytime with Sarah. We're here again in Reformers Bookshop and we're going to read a story. I hope you're keeping nice and warm on this cold and windy day. Um, the story that we're going to read today is called Don't Blame the Mud. It is published by New Growth Press. It's written by Marty Machowski and illustrated by Craig McIntosh. And it's all about a boy who does something that he shouldn't be doing outside and what happens next. Let's start. My troubles began one spring day as I was walking home from school. The rain had stopped and the sun was shining. As I jumped over mud puddles, I could hear my mum's parting words echoing in my head. Max, don't get those clothes dirty. Come home and change before you play. I looked down at my new school uniform. It was still clean. Phew. I should have kept walking on the sidewalk, but the trail that ran down the creek looked much more fun. The muddy path seemed to call out to me that day. I can keep my clothes clean, I thought, and I can catch frogs and skip stones. Soon I forgot all about Mum's warning. What do you think is going to happen to his clothes? Do you think they'll stay clean? I walked on logs. I hopped from rock to rock, over puddles and patches of mud. I dodged the mud splashes. Missed me! I shouted as I ducked a huge one. Mum will never know. I came home this way, I thought. Then, all of a sudden, a frog jumped across the path. I ran after the frog, but tripped on a stick. I grabbed hold of a tree branch and I hung on tight. The branch broke my fall and swung me over to a mossy log. That was a close call, I thought as I let go of the branch. It sprang back into place far back on the other side of a sea of mud. Now I was trapped. Look at the mud coming all around him. Everywhere I turned, the mud blocked my way. My only hope was to make it to a large flat rock in the middle of the muck. I backed down the log to get a good start. Then I took off and ran. But just as I jumped, my foot slid and slipped I missed the rock, fell forward into the mud, and this time there were no branches to save me. When I hit the mud, it made a huge splash. The cold slime soaked through to my skin. Oh no! I shouted as I sprang to my feet to try and get out of the mud. As I stood, I heard mum's voice calling for me from up the road. Max, where are you? She shouted, I'm in big trouble, I thought. Look the mud all over him now. What do you think he's going to try and do? Do you think he'll tell mum what happened? I shook the mud from my hands and stomped my feet on the path. But there was no way to get rid of that mud. It clung to my pants and my shirt and my socks and my shoes. The mud smelled worse than any dead fish. Now what am I going to do, I wondered, as mum walked down the road. She was still calling for me. I must get out of these clothes before mum finds out, I thought. So I scrambled up the steps to my house. I went in through the back door and snuck up to my room. I made it! Phew! I kicked off my shoes and took off my muddy clothes. I wiped my face on my shirt. I threw on clean clothes as fast as I could and stuffed the smelly uniform under my bed. It's not my fault, I thought. I was doing fine till I slipped and fell. My clothes were all clean till the mud splashed on me. It's all the mud's fault. That's easy to see. Do you think that's true? I pulled the book off the shelf as mum arrived home. Then I jumped in my bed and pretended to read. The book was upside down and my muddy track sled straight to my room. Soon mum was knocking on the bedroom door. Come in, I said. My heart was pounding. I was afraid. Do you think his mum's going to notice? 
I think so. Max, she said, don't try to fool me. You tracked mud right through the kitchen and down the hall. The footprints lead to your room. I slowly lowered the book and looked around. My dirty clothes were peeking out from under the bed. There was mud everywhere. It seemed to be laughing at me. Get your muddy uniform out from under your bed, I'm ordered. Toss it in the washer and then go take a shower. We'll talk after you're clean. I didn't say a word as I pulled out, of the, ball of pulled out the ball of clothes. The mud on my pants and my shirt shouted one word. Guilty. Once in the bathroom, the mirror revealed a white a swipe of mud on my cheek and a clod in my hair. I had mud on my neck, my shoulders and my chest. No wonder she figured it out, I said, and I jumped in the shower to scrub it away. After my shower, I still didn't feel clean. Somewhere down deep inside, the mud seemed to stay. I put on clean clothes and walked down the hall. Look, it's like the mud is still following him, even though he's clean. Max! My dad called, come into the living room. As I turned the corner, I saw him standing with mum, holding my muddy shoes. What happened today? He asked. What do you think he's going to say? I took a deep breath and tried to explain. It's not my fault that I slipped and fell. My clothes were clean till the mud splashed on me. It's the mud's fault. It wasn't me. Dad shook his head and said, Max, try that again. This time, don't blame the mud. Mum reminded you when you left for the day not to get dirty. You have no one to blame but yourself. I knew Dad was right. I was to blame. I lowered my head. Mum put her arm around me as I spoke through my tears. I showered and scrubbed till the mud was all gone. But down deep, it still feels like it's there. Max, my mum said as she looked into my eyes, the mud you feel is guilt because you didn't obey. God says that if we all try to go our own, that we all try to go our own way, not God's way. That's what sin is. We think doing what we want will make us happy, but instead, we feel sad and bad inside. Only God can wash away the mud in our hearts. Dad went on to explain, we're all born with that stain of sin, and so we all disobey. That's why God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross in our place. If you turn from your own way, your sin, and believe in Jesus, your sin and guilt will be washed away just like the mud, and God will give you a new, clean heart and his spirit to help you turn from sin and go God's way. I'd heard the story of Jesus a hundred times, but there, in that moment, God helped me see that Jesus died on the cross for me, and only he can make me clean. Deep down inside, I knew it was true and that God was calling me to turn from my sin and trust in Jesus. So I closed my eyes and began to tr talking to God. God, I disobeyed mum and lied to my dad, I confessed. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I scrubbed off the mud it went down the drain, but deep in my heart, the stain still remains. Please forgive me. Right there, in a flash, God turned my sadness into joy. God forgave all my sins and washed me clean. I felt brand new inside. My sad tears gave way to a big smile. 
Then I told my parents the true story. They heard all my sins and forgave every one. They both gave me a hug. The worst day turned into the best day. Phew. The mud was all gone and so was my shame. So was his feeling bad. My heart was washed clean and deep inside I knew God was now living with me. And that's the end of the story. Now, when I read this story, I think of times that I've done the wrong thing. But it's a great story because it shows us that when we confess our sins, when we say sorry, either to people who we've hurt or disobeyed or to God, God forgives us. That's a great thing to do. So join us next week. Next week we'll be reading something and we'll be reading it live. So if you tune in at 1.30, you'll catch it. But we won't be putting it up online later. So make sure you're here on time. Until next week. Bye.